Evening guys, um, an interesting point was brought up by somebody in the comments uh, relating to making an online income isn't for everybody and not everybody can do it. Um, I would say a lot of people don't know how to get started in it. I do think that a lot of people have the potential to do it if they wanted to. Um, I mean, if we let's just take some ideas, right? Um, teaching English, you can do it online, you can do it um, where you're looking for your own students, you can do it via um, another sc school doing it for you. Um, a lot of it doesn't even require any basic um, qualification. Um, if you can actually get some processes and that out of school, then it can actually be structured for you. Um, so that is a route that many expats have done and it does work and some of the people I know aren't the most computer savvy but they still manage to make a living out of teaching English. Others have moved into it because it was easier to make money doing that because once you get a schedule and a set routine uh, it can be quite easy. I know my, my wife teaches um, Spanish, uh, well, she could teach Spanish actually, but she speak, uh, teaches English in Spain. Um, people come to the house and do it. So teaching English is a prime example. There, there, there's a lot of opportunity in there. A lot of people don't maybe lack the confidence or whatever, but it is possible. Uh, doing YouTube videos. They make money, but not great money. One of the problems people have is they're obsessed with this Philippines niche. The Philippines niche is probably one of the most saturated because you've got a lot of people that have a lot of time um, to churn out videos en masse, um, but also they're not really buying products a lot of the time. There's other markets that are more productive. Um, things like doing how-to videos, for example. Um, the good thing about that, don't need to show your face, but you can churn videos out, all, you know, 20 videos a day even. Um, so there is opportunity in that as well. Now, can everybody do it? Um, it takes a bit of practice. The reality is it's not a case of you can't do it, it's, it's getting into a routine. If you look at the way my videos have progressed over time, you'll see um, they become more comfortable with it. I wouldn't say more professional because in all honesty, for the, the amount of revenue generated, it's not worth spending a lot of time on production. Um, it's not, I'm not selling a hotel, I'm not selling a resort or anything like that. So it's I'm not really that fussed in driving it that way uh, but at the same time there is opportunity for that um, affiliate marketing does work can you make big money uh, depends how dedicated you are to it in all honesty because I've made money on de uh, on affiliate marketing I've done things like um, VPNs virtual private networks where you've I've used them for access when I'm overseas because I have investments in the UK but a lot of them are blocked because they're outside the UK they're um, there's nothing illegal by the way it's just the fact because they, they lock the sites down um, I know what it's like because I've had my servers before when I was doing the call center I could see it constantly being bombarded from Russia China etc so I can understand just writing entire countries off that have nothing to do with it because it shouldn't be poking their nose around in the UK investments but yeah there's a, that that's another route the um, Another thing is peer-to-peer -peer lending. Peer-to-peer -peer lending is something you want to start early and just develop it over time. Does it work? Answer is yes. I make money on peer-to-peer -peer lending. Um, the good thing about that is it's low risk, although there is a risk, um, but its returns aren't great. I'm, a, I make, I'm making about 10% at the minute um, per year, but the thing is I just throw the money in there regularly and just leave it. It's, it's not money I'm looking to spend, it's money I'm rolling. Um, so peer-to-peer -peer lending is a good source of developing a regular income. Uh, what else is there? I suppose you can get into day trading, um, high risk, very high risk. You've got to understand what you're doing. But I know three or five people that do that, and they do okay out of it. 
Uh, there's investing in things like cryptocurrencies, which have fluctuations in the market. So you have potential growth there on a regular basis. Uh, what else is there? You've got stuff localized, um, sort of like marketing for local businesses, doing websites, doing SEO stuff, Facebook selling, setting up your own um, trading accounts with things like eBay, um, set up your own websites where you're actually trading stuff through a website. Um, does that work? Yes, I make money on that. Is it three sites now? I've got three sites that make money, um, and they're automated. I just get pings of emails to say I've been paid. Um, so yes, that works. Now, is it for everybody? The answer is no. Um, in the sense that if you sit there and go, Matt, can you do it for me? And I'll just sit here and I'll just take the money once it's all up and running. That's not how I work. And it's, it's not like anybody else will work because they put a lot of effort in to get where they are. Um, you'll find a lot of people will help you. But if you won't put the same amount of effort in they have, bearing in mind that you're probably getting their time for free and then sitting there expecting them to give you free money for by doing it for you, uh, then you ain't going to get anywhere. Because uh, people people ain't got the patience. I know I haven't. So that's why when I get messages with people about the call center, oh, Matt, just, I'll give you a call. You tell me how to set up my call center. No. that's What the hell are you talking about? Um, that's, that's not how this works. If you have a problem with a server, I might help you. If you wanted to... Uh, develop a venture with me I'll work with you but am I going to set you a call center up because you're sitting in the the kitchen with four computers and going oh I want to take this to something big the answer is no I haven't got the patience I haven't got the time um, but also where's my added value in this um, there's no benefit I've got a better call center set up already so Unless you actually got the potential of being clients, which is the main thing you need with call centers, because finding call centers is not difficult. Finding good clients and good contracts is the hard bit. Um, you can fill all the rest in. I can give you people that can sell. I can give you people that uh, can close contracts. I can uh, get people to do online marketing, etc., and find multiple revenue streams. The hard bit is is getting the clients. That's it. Um, so, yeah, you've got to put the same amount of effort into the people you're asking for help because everybody has things to do. Um, that's why when I sometimes see some of the stuff people ask me, it may take them a while for me to get to respond to them because, A, you're taking my time, but B, when I look at it, you're not asking for help. You're asking for it to be done for you. I won't do it. Um, I'll put effort into somebody's idea. If they've got an idea, I'll help them evolve it and develop it into something bigger, try and network them with other people and expand it out. But if you just come in and go, well, Matt, I don't know what I want to do. Can you give me some ideas? That's You need to start with something. You start to put something on the table to begin with. You've got to have a workflow, an idea, a roadmap of where you want to be going, what you're expecting, how you're going to evolve it. And then I can help fill in some of the gaps. Um, that's all I can say on that. But there's a lot of expats in the Philippines I know do SEO. They do websites. They're running eBay. They're running their own shops, virtual shops. They, they're doing things with day trading. There's a few crypto guys I know. There's um, Some of them actually do exports which is all done through websites where but the wholesale things like shell jewelry and things like that um there's two people i know that do organics um that they're shipping internally within the philippines so the the, the point being is there is a lot of business around people what you've got to have is the vision to see where you can take it i mean it's like today I am now looking at a new website for a business I haven't even started yet. The reason being, I already have people that are already doing the tasks, and I think we can make it into something much, much bigger. Um, and now I have my home office back in Spain. When I get back, I can make this work. So the whole thing here is you need to put the same amount of investment into it as you'd expect me to, or you want other people to do. 
because at the end of the day, you've got to make it work. Otherwise, it's a hobby. It's a bit like I, I sit and hear about these complete people whining about their um, university fees for what I call hobby courses. The courses, they're getting degrees in something that will not give them a job. It will not give them more empowerment financially or not help them in any way except for getting a loan and blowing the money over their time at university. Um, that's a hobby. Somebody's sitting there going, well, I've got to pay this debt back. You know what? If I went and wasted it on champagne, I would come out with about exactly the same as you've come from university. Because at the end of the day, you picked a course that made no benefit to you um, in any way beyond the fact of getting yourself in debt. It's not science. It's not um, getting a doctorate in something useful. It's not uh, mathematics or robotics or anything like that. It's courses that a lot of people pick because it's something they like. Um, and that's why I call them hobby courses. And this is like with a business. You're either doing a business or it's a hobby. If it's a hobby, then see it as that. If it's a business, take it seriously and commit to it. That's what I'm going to say on that. But yeah, I know um, Chris and Subi was talking about some of this stuff as well. And I do agree, there's a lot of people who can't do this. And it's not because they can't. And this is a funny thing. I don't think nobody can't do anything. I think a lot of it is they will not commit to that same level sometimes. Um, because a lot of it is a case of knowing where you can develop things. I had a friend who worked on um, ro welding robots for um, car bumpers. It, the the sort of spin the bumper and it welds at multi point. You've got two robots spinning around. Now he used to reset the program and he could find errors in the program. And he was complaining he didn't earn enough. And I said, go and do some CNC training and qualify yourself to get on the programming side. And he says, yeah, but that takes a lot of effort and time. I don't want to do that. Well, why are you complaining then? You've, you've set your own limits. You, you've got the ideal opportunity with, you've got two robots there that you're using on a daily basis. You understand a lot of the functionality in the, the coding already because you're having to reset the, uh, the robots and things like that. And yet you don't want to do the extra bit, which is the bit that actually pays good money. I can only help people so far. And like that, that was the last time we ever talked about that. Um, so, yeah, if people have got the drive and ambition, of course they'll find a solution. Um, if they don't, then it's not a case of they couldn't. It's more a case of they choose not to, in my view. All right, guys. Thanks for watching.